Hi everyone, I'm Liz Raskoff. I'm on the public engagement team at Go Triangle, and I'd like to welcome you all to Zooming into Transit, a series of interactive virtual presentations about some of the many transit investments that are being planned for the Triangle. Today I'm joined by my colleagues, Andy Willard, public engagement specialist, Simone oates Bullock, public engagement specialist, and Jay Heikis, senior transportation planner at Go Triangle. So first things first, we'd like to acknowledge uh, that the reason that we're doing these videos is to connect with the public that is for the most part staying home. And um, we're looking to get input on transit projects that are currently moving forward. So coronavirus, um, as we know, is affecting all communities. And as a public transit agency, Go Triangle and its partners across Wake, Durham and Orange counties are providing an essential community service, uh, transporting first responders, healthcare workers, and other essential employees to their jobs. With the health and safety of our employees and the community being a top priority, we've taken several steps uh, to do our part to stop the spread. These include cleaning our buses twice a day between the morning and the afternoon runs, um, as well as using a fogger to better disinfect the buses. Um, we are providing hand sanitizer for our passengers and we're also suspending fare collections and asking all riders who are able to enter and exit through the rear doors. But even with these measures in place, Go Triangle is asking folks to only use the bus for essential services and trips. Um, but if you're at home and missing the bus like we are, there are still plenty of ways to get involved with the future of transit. So let's get started. This segment will cover the Regional Transit Center study. And again, we're joined by Jay Heikis, a senior transportation planner. Hi, Jay. Can you, um, I guess before we get into it, can you help us understand better um, how the RTC serves folks and where it is? So it's between Raleigh and Durham, but can we help folks place it a little bit better? Sure. Um, so it's on I-40 or near I-40, um, near the interchange with I-540. Um, it's also close to the airport and Research Triangle Park. Um, it's right off the exit for Page Road. Um, so the Regional Transit Center um, is a is our one of the reasons why we're doing this study is because the Regional Transit Center is our main transfer point uh, between our different regional bus routes that serve um, communities within Wake, Orange, and Durham counties. Um, so from there, someone you can get on a bus and go to. Durham or Chapel Hill or Apex, Cary, um, as well as Raleigh and RDU Airport. Um, in total, there's 10 routes and about a thousand people board the bus each day at the Regional Transit Center. Um, a lot of those folks are changing buses, um, but there are, there's a good number of folks who um, either park and ride at the Regional Transit Center um, who, who work at a office building nearby. Um, and we really wanna improve the safety, functionality, and convenience of the Regional Transit Center. Thanks, Jay. So if you want to tell us a little bit more about the goals of the study. Sure. Um, so really grouped into three categories. Um, the first is about providing a better experience for riders. Um, so in that image you can see um, there's not a whole lot of space between buses um, for benches or shelters. Um, and the shelters you can see um, don't really do a good job of covering you when it rains um, hard like it did this morning. Um, I think the sun's coming out outside now, um, finally. Um, but we really wanna make it a comfortable, um, safe and inviting experience for passengers. Um, so that's that first category. Um, the second thing we wanna do is make it easier and more efficient for buses to enter and exit um, the Regional Transit Center. Right now, they share a driveway um, with folks who are using a park and ride, um, with our Uber and Lyft um, RTP Connect Transit Pilot. Um, as well as the driveways for the adjoining businesses near us. Um, so a lot of times, um, especially in the afternoons, buses will get stuck um, trying to exit um, onto the roads near um, the Regional Transit Center, um, and buses can sometimes be late because of that. Um, and then the last thing we wanna do is improve access to transit. Um, so what we mean by that is um, maximizing the number of folks who are around the Regional Transit Center um, who can benefit from all the buses that come in and connect at the Regional Transit Center. And then also um, what I mean by that is increasing the number of things that are near um, so that if you're using the bus, you can easily go and um, maybe go to the store or and pick up some groceries um, or some um, other items you might need or get something to eat. Um, right now, the Regional Transit Center is kind of out there by itself, except for a few nearby offices. 
That's really helpful. Thanks. Um, so can you help us understand kind of the next step for the study and maybe let us know some of the kinds of improvements that could be considered for the regional transit center? Sure. Um, so next steps, um, there's an ongoing survey, which we'll tell you more about in just a minute. Um, we really want you to um, share um, what's important to you, um, what you think is important for the regional transit center. Um, once we have that, um, we will sort of identify the feasibility um, of different opportunities to improve the regional transit center. Um, we'll then uh, have a consultant uh, that's working with us. They'll create some design options and we'll select preferred design. Um, and then that's, that's part of the current study we're doing. Uh, it's the regional transit center feasibility study. And then once that study is complete, um, we would then undertake actions to um, identify additional funding. Um, we'd actually um, initiate and then complete um, the design and engineering of those improvements. Um, and then once that's done, we'd be able to begin construction. Um, so design and engineering is something that could take a year or more, and then construction may take several years. Um, and then thinking about um, different opportunities for improvements, um, these really tie back to the goals. Um, the first big opportunity is to improve um, passenger amenities, so um, shelters that cover more of the platform and cover more people, um, additional seating areas, um, lighting, security measures, um, that type of thing. Um, and the other thing is about making it easier for the buses um, to move um, both to enter and exit the site and to move around within the site um, and make sure that there are um, safe ways for bikes and pedestrians to get between the platforms and to access the station um, as well as um, enough room for the buses to move around. Um, so those are really the opportunities um, or the opportunities for improvement um, that have to do with the site. And then the other thing is the site itself. Um, one of the major goals is to um, reduce the amount of time it takes for buses to get to and from I-40 and other major roadways that are nearby. Um, so one of the best ways we might be able to do that is by um, moving the transit center actually to be closer to I-40. Um, so in addition to um, identifying the types of improvements, we're also thinking about different locations. Okay, great. So I know you walked through some of the next steps and this timeline does lay out some of that. Um, and it gets us all the way to fall 2020, but uh, with the situation as it is right now with COVID-19, how do you foresee that maybe changing this timeline or, or affecting it? Sure, um, I think that could happen in a couple of ways um, um, with respect to COVID changing the timeline. Um, and that really has to do with um, sort of our engagement um, with the survey, both the public survey that's going on right now. We really want the survey to be representative of riders who use the regional transit center and transit riders in the region. Um, so if we don't reach, if we're not able to do that with the web survey, we'll need to do some additional survey work uh, once we're um, back closer to normal and more folks are on the bus. Um, the same is also true of coordinating with some of our um, partners on this project. Um, those include um, North Carolina Department of Transportation, as well as the cities and towns um, that are served by our bus services. We just want to make sure that we're um, able to do sufficient coordination on this project. Um, and the last thing has to do actually with the completion of the study. So this study, of course, is just the planning feasibility study. Um, then as alluded to on the last slide, um, there's then also the step of um, finding additional funding and then designing and engineering those improvements. Um, it's possible that um, the COVID-19 affects some of our revenue sources, and we may not be able to do that design and engineering or construction um, as soon as we uh, may otherwise would want to. It's helpful. Um, so a couple of different ways in which it can affect us. Um, but this study itself um, was funded in fiscal year 20 and prior years. Um, so the study itself should be complete, um, hopefully by fall or winter of 2020. Um, it's those next steps that um, could be affected by funding right. shortfalls. Okay, great. So we've understood from Jay that some of the next steps are to have folks um, fill out that survey that's available at gofortnc.org slash RTC um, to help us understand if you currently use the, tra the transit center or um, you would be interested in using it if it had certain improvements. Um, now is your opportunity to let us know. You can also mail comments to the address on the screen and um, of course follow us on Twitter at Go Triangle to stay up to date. Um, so that's all we have for this segment and we hope to see you again soon on Zooming into Transit. Thanks everyone.
Bye. Thanks. Thanks.